Good evening, Bible Way. Welcome this evening to Bible Way Community Baptist Church, the place where Jesus Christ is Lord of all and the Word of God still transform life. We are excited and delighted that, that you have tuned in this evening to be a part of our Wednesday night Bible study. As I always say, it's no accidental coincidence that you have tuned in, but it's by the providence of God. God has something he wants to say and do in your life, and so the Lord has directed you to be a part of our Wednesday night Bible study. And we got a real good Bible study, real good lesson tonight, and uh, uh, hopefully you can share this lesson. We want you to share this lesson because this is a lesson that all of us are going to need sooner or later. Uh, this is one of the most important Bible studies that uh, we will uh, be having. And we have entered into the holiday season and we hope and pray that all of you will have a real good, uh, happy, happy Thanksgiving. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer as we begin our time together this evening. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. Help us now as we study your word, give us your spirit. We pray that your spirit will lead us, guide us, and direct us in all that we say and do so that honor and glory can be ascribed to your holy and righteous name. This we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen. All right. Uh, tonight we will be studying uh, a new, we're starting a new series here on the, the study, the study of last things. We're going to be looking at the study of last things. If we was in um, a Bible school or seminary, um, they would call this study the study of eschatology, the study of eschatology which is the study of last things. And so this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be studying the last things. And uh, we'll finish up that series on the church. And now you can always go back out on Facebook if you miss uh, any of our studies and uh, uh, avail yourself to that and review some of those lessons. Um, but right after the church age, it's the study of last things. And tonight we want to study where are the saved dead? Where are the saved dead? You know, as a pastor, a part of my ministry is a ministry unto uh, bereaved families. And bereaved families are often asking the question about where are the dead? Where are the dead? Where's my loved ones? Are they asleep in the grave? Where, where are they? Uh, uh, some theologians will say they are asleep in the grave. Then you have others say, no, they don't want on home to be with the Lord. They're in paradise. They're in heaven. So where are the dead? Where are the dead? And uh, you will see uh, from the beginning of the Bible all the way to the end of the Bible, uh, I'm going to show you that the dead don't remain here. The dead, the saved dead, is with the Lord. They are in heaven. And I want you to get your Bible out tonight. Get a pen and paper, because I'm just going to give you a bunch of scriptures. As a matter of fact, that's why I'm sitting down tonight. I won't be really using the board that much, if I use it at all, uh, I, because I just want to give you a bunch of scriptures to settle in your mind uh, that to let you know that your uh, loved ones, your dead loved ones, they are in heaven. They don't stay here. They don't stay here. 
uh, uh, when you die, you leave that body. Your soul leave your body. And I want to show you that in scripture. Look at the first scripture we're going to look at is uh, Genesis chapter 25, verse number 8. Genesis 25 and 8. And you will see that that's dealing with uh, the old uh, patriarch, Abraham. And it says in Genesis 25 and 8 that Abraham died in a good old age, an old man full of years, and was gathered to his people. He was gathered to his people. That's uh, Genesis 25 and 8. But I want you to notice something here uh, in that verse 8. At the end where it says, and was gathered to his people. Now that phrase, gathered to his people, means to go and be with your loved ones. That's what that phrase means. It means to go and be with your loved ones. And so Abraham, when he died, his soul and his spirit went to be with his loved ones. Also, look at Genesis 49 and, and 33. Genesis 49 and 33. 49 and 33. 49 and 33, you'll see the same thing with Jacob. 49 and 33, the last verse of chapter 49, it says, and when Jacob had made an end of the commandment, uh, of commanding his sons, he gathered up his feet into the bed and yielded up the ghosts and was gathered unto his people. You see that? That phrase, gathered again unto his people. Now notice something here. Jacob pulled up his feet into the bed. So his body, he pulled up his body into the bed. But notice, his soul on the inside of him went to be with his people. Notice, did you see the separation of the body from the soul or the soul from the body? When he pulled up, he was sitting on the side of his bed. When he put his feet back in the bed and laid back down, then he died. His feet went in the bed, but his spirit and soul went to be with his people. All right, all right. That's Genesis 49 and 33. Now look at Genesis 35 and 18. Look at Genesis 35 and 18. 35 and 18, you'll see it's talking about Rachel there the death of Rachel. And 35 and 18, it said, and it came to pass as her soul was departing for she died, that she called his name Benoni, but his father called him Benjamin. Now notice when Rachel was dying, the Bible says that her soul was departing. Underline that word departing. Her soul was departing. Now think about it. It used that word departing has to do with a person leaving. That's what it means. As a soul was leaving, you know, when you go to the airport, you'll see signs that says departure and arrival. Departure and arrival. Uh, life it's just like an airport. You got people arriving. That's people being born. They arrive on this planet. But when people die, they depart this planet. They depart this life. And they go on and they continue to keep living somewhere else. Now, the saved, we're going to show you that they live with the Lord in heaven. We're going we're gonna to establish that. Just stay with me. Stay with me. Don't, don't be too impatient. 
Look at what the Bible says in Psalms 16. Psalm 16. Psalm 16. I'm going to just read it off my paper because we got a lot of uh, notes, but you should have uh, uh, the scripture down at the bottom if you don't have your Bible. Uh, Psalm 16, uh, 10 and verse 11. It says, for thou will not leave my soul in Sheol or the grave, neither will thou permit thine holy one to see corruption. Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pledges forevermore. Now notice, David is talking about two things here. First of all, he's talking about himself. He says, for thou will not leave my soul in the grave, in Sheol. And then he says, neither will thou permit thy holy one, he's talking about Jesus, to see corruption. In other words, he won't let Jesus' body stay in the grave either. Why is that? Because Jesus was raised from the grave in three days. But then he jumps to talking about the presence of God. Once you die, you go to the presence of God. He says, in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pledges forevermore. Did you notice that? When you die, you go to be with the Lord and you are in a state of joy. So your loved ones is in a state of joy, a state of bliss, a state of happiness. Oh, that's why, that's why they don't want to, listen, listen. It, it was just, you know, whenever I'm preaching about Jesus and Lazarus, how he woke Lazarus from the, uh, the grave. Uh, but the scripture says Jesus wept. Now, I know he wept for Martha and Mary, but could it be that Jesus wept too because he had to get Lazarus out of heaven and bring him back here to this earth? He was in a perfect body up there in heaven, but a, a glorified, a, well, I want to glorify, it was a heavenly body up there in heaven, but then he had to come back down here to this earth and get in this old stinky, rotten body that is dying every day. Every day that we live, we are one step closer to death. Our bodies is running down, 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 down. It ain't a such thing as evolution. We're getting better and better. Death teaches you that, ladies and gentlemen, that evolution is wrong. Evolution says you're going to get better and better and better. Matter of fact, you're going to change from a lower species to a higher species. No. <laughs> you get, it's a curve. You go high, and then once you get to a certain point in life, you start coming down. Yeah, and if you live here long enough, then you'll go back to being like a baby just about. So, uh, but David says, in your presence is fullness of joy. So your family members, your loved ones who done died and went to heaven, they are in a state of joy. And, and, and if you love them, you wouldn't want them to come back on this side. Matter of fact, you would want to go and join them on the other side. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Let me give you that scripture. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse number 5 and 7. It says, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Now notice what uh, Solomon is saying. Solomon is saying, when you die, your body go back to dust. It turns back to dust. That's why whenever I do uh, funerals and we come to the barrier, I normally get three flowers, three stems, and I'll say grave to grave, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Yeah, committing that body back to the dirt 
in which we came. Because all of us are just dirt, ladies and gentlemen. We just dirt. Some of our dirt may be a little bit prettier than others' dirt, but it's dirt the bottom of <laughs> The bottom line, we just dirt. You know, you can put some makeup on it and dress it up however you want to dress it up. But at the end of the day, it goes back to the dust. But notice, it says the spirit that inside of you goes back to where uh, it came. It goes back to God. It goes back to God. If you say it goes back to to stay with the Lord and live with the Lord forever and ever. And so uh, the spirit returned to God and live with God forever. It's only the body, ladies and gentlemen, that dies and go in the ground. Your soul and spirit don't go in that ground. Your soul and spirit goes to be with the Lord. All right, let's go over to the New Testament. Let's go over to the New Testament. Let's look at a couple of scripture. Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. I want you to see this out your own Bible. You got your Bible? Hopefully you have your Bible. Uh, Matthew 22, verse number 31 and 32. Matthew 22, verses 31 and 32. It says, but touching, but as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Now, did you notice that? Did you see that at your own Bible? Notice, since Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was not resurrected yet, then Jesus must mean that their souls are still alive since he is the God of the living and not the God of the dead. In other words, in one sense, ain't nobody dead in terms of their spirit. Their spirit is always living. That's why God says, I ain't the God of the dead now. I'm the God of the living. So he must be talking about their spirits that's living because their bodies, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, their bodies done been dead for Abraham was, what, around 1,800 years before Christ. And then you got Isaac, 100 years later, 1,700 years. Then you got Jacob, uh, uh, 1,600 years before Christ, B.C. And so uh, uh, what you have here, you have Abraham. Isaac and Jacob, their spirits are still living. Their soul, the inside of them is living. And God says, uh, uh, don't you know your Bible? Uh, I ain't the God of the dead, but I'm the God of the living. He says, I'm the, I am the God of Abraham. I'm the God of Isaac. I'm the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but the living. That's what he said, ladies and gentlemen. He said, I'm Abraham God, Isaac God, Jacob God. Now, we know these three men are dead. Their bodies is dead, but not their spirit. Their spirit is still living on, and God says, I'm the God of the living. In the same way, your loved ones may have died, but God says, I'm still their God. Why is that? Because they're with him now. The location done changed. They done went from earth to heaven. And he's still their God. He was their God on earth, and now he's their God in heaven. Yeah, yeah. He's the God of the living, not the God of the dead. All right. Let's go on a little bit further. 
Look here. You got your Bible? Look at Luke chapter 23. Look at Luke 23. Stay with me now. Luke 23. Uh, Luke 23, verse number 46. Luke 23, verse number 46. This is when Jesus was dying on the cross. Luke 23, verse number 43. I'm sorry, 43. Luke 23 and 43. This is still when Jesus was dying on the cross. Look at what he says. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shall thou be with me in paradise. Now, who's Jesus talking to? He's talking to the thief on the cross. Remember, two thieves. One on the right, one on the left. And the thief on the left, he condemned Jesus. But the thief on the right, he recognized the authority of Jesus Christ. And he believed in Jesus. And he told Jesus, when you get into your kingdom, remember me. And Jesus says, watch this. He says, today. Now notice, he didn't say tomorrow. He didn't say uh, next week. He didn't say at the resurrection, uh, uh, when the first trumpet sound or the last trumpet sound. He didn't say that. Notice what he said. Verily I say unto you, today, right today, Jesus died on that day. That man died on that day. The very day that that man died, the very day that Jesus died, he said, you're going to be with me in paradise. Now, notice he told him the day that, uh, uh, you know, today, in other words, the time frame. And then he told him the location. Soon as that man died, that man went to the paradise, to heaven, to be with Jesus, to be with Jesus. And so when you die, ladies and gentlemen, your spirit go on to be with Jesus. Now, your, your body waits for the resurrection, but your spirit done went on the very day that you die. Matter of fact, by the time you done blank your eye, if you black, bat your eye, blank your eye, that's how fast it is. It's quicker than that. That when a, when a person done died, they, they done went from earth to heaven just that fast. In a blank of an eye. In a twinkle of an eye. All right. Now look at the next verse. Uh, Luke 23, 46. Luke 23, 46. It says, And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he says, Father, into thine hand, I commend my spirit. And having say, said thus, he gave up the ghost. Now, think about it. The very moment that Jesus Christ died, he went right on to his father. He says, Father, he told you right there, Father, into your hands. I commend my spirit. So Jesus put his spirit in his father's hand. The moment that he died, he went to be right with his father. The moment, just like that. And the moment that you die, you go home to be with the father. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. Jesus' body died like that, but his spirit went right on. His spirit went right on. And so... Jesus' words not only let us know that Jesus was conscious between his death and his resurrection, but that Jesus was going on home to be with his heavenly Father. All right, let's 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 look here at Second uh, Corinthians chapter five. Second Corinthians chapter five. Let's go see what the Apostle Paul said. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Don't look like we're going to have time to get all these scriptures in, but I'm going to get uh, at least uh, uh, this one here in. 
and then give two examples. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, 2, and 3. It says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle uh, were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For it is this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Now notice Paul is referring to our earthly house, or our body like an earthly house. In other words, he says our body is really, and he used the word tabernacle, it's just like a tent. It's just like a tent. And he says, if our tent or this body is taken down, you know, just like a tent, you can put up a tent or you can take down a tent. And then when you put up a tent, you camp out. But when you take that tent down, then you moving on. And this is what Paul is saying. Paul is saying our bodies are just like a tent. God took it down, but our spirit done moved on. And he says, uh, even when our spirit has moved on, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heaven. So when you leave this body, you get another heavenly body there in heaven. You get... I call it more of a temporary body until God comes back down here, until you come back down here and resurrect that body, and then God is going to glorify that body. But it, until the meantime, when you go to heaven, you go to heaven and you get you a heavenly body. You get you a heavenly body. And then Paul talks about how we groan earnestly, designed to be clothed upon with our house which is in heaven. Yeah, in this old body that we have here, you got aches and pain, and you wish for another body. Yes, you do. And the older that you get, the more pain you start getting, you just going to start wishing you had a, a heavenly body. And that's what uh, makes us appreciate heaven a whole lot more uh, uh, when we get to heaven than right now. Because, see, like right now, uh, we don't know what we missing. We don't know what we missing. But it's just like uh, over in the book of Revelation, it talks about uh, they will hunger no more. They will thirst no more. They'll get sick no more. Uh, uh, they will cry no more. They will die no more. The former things done passed away. And behold, all things are, are new. See, once you get that heavenly body, man, you're going to appreciate it a whole lot more. Because in that body, you won't get hungry. You won't get thirsty. You won't be crying. You won't ever die again. And so it's going to be totally different. And so Paul says, when this body is taken down, just know they got a better. They got something better. Know that your loved ones who when I went to be with the Lord, they got something better. They got something that, that, they, that will never uh, cause any problems. This, this old body that we got down here, this old flesh, it caused all kinds of problems. Sometimes you can't see good. Sometimes you can't hear good. Sometimes you can't swallow good. And that's why we got to go to the doctor. But you don't have to worry about going to no doctor up there in heaven. Because you're going to have a complete, uh, perfect body up there in heaven. And then notice, I like what he says here in verse number 8. He says, for we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. See, when a person is absent in the body. See, our spirit, when you go to a funeral, you can talk to that person all you want to. 
But you know why they don't answer you? Because they're not present. With, they're not present. They absent. Yeah, they absent. If you took role, they absent. But they spirit is with the Lord. It's present with the Lord. They absent on earth, but they present with the Lord. And this is what Paul is saying. Paul is saying that uh, whether, verse 8, he says, I say will and rather to be absent from the body. Uh, you, as a Christian, that's why we have homegoing services at the funeral because all of us one day want to be absent from the body so we can be present with the Lord. So notice something. I've made a couple of notes. The spirit and soul is still alive outside the body. That's the first thing you need to know. The spirit and the soul is still alive outside the body. The spirit and soul goes to be with the Lord at the moment of death. And our heavenly body is much better than our earthly body. And then finally, Paul has no doubt that when a Christian dies, he go home to be with the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Now, look at, uh, uh, I want you to see two illustrations. The first illustration is found over in Luke chapter 16, verse number 22 through 24. Luke 16, verses 22 through 24. Luke 16, 22 through 24. Now, this is the story. Jesus told this story about a rich man and a poor man named Lazarus. And you know the story how Lazarus was at this rich man uh, uh, gate, and every day he was begging, but the rich man wouldn't even uh, give him the crumbs that fall from his table. And the dogs would come out there and lick his sores. So this man was in bad health. But verse 22 says, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in the water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in these flames. Now I want you to see something. First of all, this is not a parable. A lot of people say, oh, this was the parable of the rich man and the poor man. No, 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 no. Whenever Jesus told a parable, he never gave names. And in this story, he says a name. He says a man named Lazarus. Poor man named Lazarus. Now, I want you to see something. First of all, you have two deaths. You have two deaths. You see that? The rich man died and the poor man died. Secondly, you have two departures. You had two departures. The poor man, the Bible said the angels came and they took him. And he went right on to glory. He went to Abraham's bosom, went to paradise. The rich man, uh, he departed. The Bible didn't talk so much about his departure, but it talks about his funeral. So what that tells me, uh, this man probably had one of the biggest funerals in the world. But notice where his spirit ended. We got two destinations. We got two destinations. That's the third thing. You got two destinations. Uh, the poor man, his destination, he ended up in paradise, Abraham bosom. The rich man um, destination, 
He ended up in hell. The Bible says in hell. Now you think about it. In hell, this man still had his eyes. He, he still could see. See, your soul, keep in mind, what is your soul? Your soul is your five senses. You can, in other words, that's your conscience. Uh, uh, you can hear, taste, touch, smell, and see. That man had all five of his faculties. Did you notice that? He had all five of his senses down there in hell. Listen, when you die, you keep all your senses. You keep all your senses. You keep your, you can see, you can hear, you can smell, you can taste, you can touch. You keep all your senses. You go to heaven, you're going to enjoy it. You're going to enjoy the smell. You're going to enjoy what you see. You're going to enjoy what you hear. You're going to enjoy what you taste. You're going to enjoy what you touch. But in hell, if you go to hell, if a person go to hell, they're not going to enjoy what they see. They're not going to enjoy what they hear. They're not going to enjoy what they smell. They're not going to enjoy what they taste. They're not going to enjoy what they touch. It's totally opposite. And notice, this man, he felt the fire in hell. He felt that fire in hell. This is why, ladies and gentlemen, we need to be working as hard as we can to make sure that none of our family members go to hell. You don't want your friends to go to hell, and you don't even want your worst enemy to even go to hell. And see, hell wasn't even created for man anyway. Hell was created for the devil and those demons. Yeah, so man ain't got no business in hell. I used to ask people the question, what in hell do you want? You don't, you don't want nothing out of hell. You don't want no part of hell. All right, and then the last story I want you to see. I want you to see this last story. And we'll just stay in Luke, because you can find this story in Matthew. But look here at Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, verses 30 through 33. Luke chapter 9, and, and we're going to stop after this one here. Luke chapter 9, verses 30 through 33. Notice, uh, this is uh, on the mount of the transfiguration. And Jesus now, he's talking. Uh, uh, he's, he took with him Peter, James, and John. They went up on this mountain. And as Jesus was praying, remember, uh, the glory of the Lord, that Shekinah glory that was on the inside, popped to the outside of Jesus. And uh, uh, he began to shine just like the noonday sun. When you come to verse 30, it says, And behold, there talked with him two men, which was Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and they that were with him was heavy with sleep, and when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it's good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, but not knowing what he had said. Now, what I want you to note is that Peter, James, and John they saw Elijah and Moses. Now you think about it. They saw them. They saw Jesus and they saw these other two men, Elijah and Moses. And notice, Peter knew Elijah and Moses. Now how did he know that? I believe that when you get to heaven, God is going to give you just supernatural knowledge. And if when people walk up to you, you're going to say, hey, Moses, hey, like when you are in the presence of the Lord, 
uh, you're going to have perfect knowledge. You're going to have perfect knowledge. Yep, there ain't nobody going to be able to trick you and fool you like on earth. And so people often ask the question, will we, we know each other when we get to hell? Yeah, uh-huh. You're going to know each other just like Peter knew e Elijah and Moses. You going to know your loved ones. You going to know your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, your nieces, your nephews, your sons, your daughters. You going to know them in heaven. You going to know them in glory. So uh, uh, be encouraged. And then think about Moses and Elijah. They had been dead, or uh, Moses particularly, he had been dead 1,400 years. And then Elijah, remember, he was translated. He was, you know, the Lord came and got him in the rapture, but his soul and body uh, went through a change just like that 800 and some years ago. But all of them knew one another up there on that mound. Notice, they still was alive. Even though they had been dead thousands of years, they still was alive. I don't care how long your loved one done been dead. It may be 50 years, 40 years, 20 years, maybe 10 years, maybe 100 years but they still alive, they still alive. Yeah, they're in heaven. And then notice, Moses and Elijah both knew about the upcoming death of Jesus. People often ask the question, do heaven know, do people in heaven know anything about on earth? I believe they know some things. I don't know, they know if they know everything. Matter of fact, I don't want them to know everything. But I believe that some of the good things that's about to happen to you, I think sometimes God said, come here, come here. I want to show you something. I want, uh, uh, come on, you need to see your son getting this diploma. Come on, I want you to be at the graduation. I don't want you to miss his graduation. A lot of times people say, oh, I wish mama could have been here. I wish dad could have been here. I think they are there. I think they looking over the balcony. I think they looking over the balcony. They're in heaven and they seeing you, your loved one, your grandbabies get that degree and what have you. And uh, uh, there's joy. I believe anything that's going to bring some joy, I thank God let them in on it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's our lesson tonight. So uh, of, of our question, where are the dead? Where are the dead? They are in heaven. In the presence of the Lord. And when there's the presence of the Lord, there's joy. So they are there in the presence of the Lord with their loved ones. What done happened at death? They done went on home to be with their people. Just like Abraham and Jacob, they done went on home to be with their loved ones. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes I think this is why God allows some close loved ones to die kind of back to back. So when one get to heaven, it won't be long before that other one be in heaven. And boy, they just happy, 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 happy. All right. Well, God bless you. May God keep you is our prayer. Let's go to the Lord. In prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this lesson. Take this lesson and use it to bring honor and glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a good night. And we'll see you on Sunday.